any kind of web development, we for sure will need two things, a text editor to create our project and a web browser to test our results. While there are many options out there for this course, we'll use Google Chrome as our web browser and Visual Studio Code as our text editor. While I can go on and on about why you should pick these two specific tools in a short one sentence answer, both of them are industry leaders and first ones to implement new features and by doing so improve our workflow and overall development experience. Both of them are for free and require simple download. While this is not a requirement, meaning you can use other browser and text editor to your liking, if you want the same exact results during the course as me, I would suggest downloading these two tools. First, let's start by getting the Google Chrome browser. So I'm going to open up whatever default browser I have on my machine. And I'm just going to say Google Chrome and we can maybe add, I don't know, download because this should always point us to the right direction anyway. And as you can see, we have the most secure browser on the web. You can just click it over here and we have an option for downloading. And we just bravely click here, accept and install. And this is going to be installed on my machine. Once the download has been completed, we can head over to downloads and notice over here we have the installer package. So we can just click on a package and notice right away it gives us the Google Chrome. So we can just drag and drop it to our applications just so we can have it available. And right now it's saying that it's copying to the applications. And we should have it available to us in no time. Now, once the installation has been completed, you can just close it over here. And if you want, you can just eject the Google Chrome and we can just look for it in the application. So let me see where in the applications I have the Google Chrome. So first of all, let me open this. And once I open it up over here, it's going to ask me whether I'm OK with this being the application from the web. I'm going to say yes, that I would like to open it as well as I would right away going to set it up in a dock. So I'm just going to right click it and this is going to keep it in a dock. Now, also, I would right away like to make this a default browser. Now, again, you don't have to do this, but I would suggest that you do that with me. Just remember that depending on your operating system, you might need to take different steps. Now, on a Mac, I'm going to head over for this icon all the way on the top right corner and just going to click on it. So as you can see over here, we have the settings part and we can just click on the settings link. Now within the settings, we're going to scroll down a little bit and notice here we have make it as a default. So I'm just going to click it over here and I'm going to say that, yes, I would like to use Chrome as my default. And that pretty much completes our downloading of Chrome and setting it up as our default browser. OK, awesome. We have our browser. Now what? Well, I believe I told you that we needed also a text editor so we can Put our good old friend Google right now already, since it is on our machine uh, to use. And we can just search for the Visual Studio Code. And again, same old spiel. You can just say Visual Studio Code. Well, we're not going to be looking for logo. We're going to be looking for the Visual Studio Code. And notice this is going to be the first link that pops up. So again, bravely, without hesitation, we just head over here. And as you can see, it tells me right away what operating system I'm on. And it says, well, here is the download buddy. OK, so I'm just going to click it over here. So this is going to start my download again. The installation package is going to be available to us in a second. And again, obviously, if you're using different operating system, they will going to provide you with a proper installation package for your operating system. Now, here you can see that this would be my download, so I can just open it over here. And once I have it right next to Google Chrome, I have my Visual Studio code. Now, again, the same old spiel, I would just need to grab this and just drag and drop it in my applications. So I'm done with getting my Visual Studio Code. And again, the same thing within the applications. I would first find the Visual Studio Code and I'm just going to open up over here. Now, let me first of all, maybe close this. I don't need the actual browser open. And again, it will going to ask you, are you OK with this? Well, obviously we are since we want to work with this. And before we do anything again, I'm going to keep this in the dock. I'm just going to say options and keep it in a doc. Now, once we open up the Visual Studio Code and you know what, let me just make this bigger so it's a little bit easier to see. We all going to be met by welcoming string. Now, in a welcoming screen, we have a few options. We can open up a new file, open the folder. And as you can see, we can also customize this. Now, this is going to be the first time when you're actually downloading Visual Studio Code. 
obviously, you're not going to have the recent projects. The only reason I do is because I had to reinstall the Visual Studio Code just so we can go through all the steps together. Now, I'm not going to spend tons of times right now on Visual Studio Code because I would like to get us up and running and actually create our first web page. I do want to show you though the general workspace. So let me close this first of all. And as you notice these icons, right? So we have at the very top, this is where we're going to be working with our files. So as you notice, I'm opening this up and this is going to be the space where we're going to be doing most of our work. In fact, all of our work, and this would be our file structure. So whether there's going to be folders, files, or images or anything like that, this is going to be within this tab over here within the sidebar. Now, next, we have a few other things, few other icons that we're not going to use right now. Let's say search throughout the documents. Then we also have for the source control, which would be Git, as well as debugging. Now, again, we're not going to cover them right now because we're not going to use them. However, there will going to be something useful, which is extensions, meaning with every text editor, you basically have capabilities of adding more features to a text editor. And we're going to do that actually in a second. But for now, just remember that these would be basically the extensions that you are, have available. So as you can see here, recommended. But for now, you shouldn't have any extensions installed if you obviously just downloaded the Visual Studio Code. Now, if you would like to search for extension, again, we can just type whatever extension we're looking for. And obviously, this is not going to come up with anything. But let's say we're going to say JavaScript. And this is going to bring me all kinds of extensions. Now, last but not least, regarding Visual Studio Code, something that will going to be important, especially later on, as we're going to be working a little more and more with Visual Studio Code, it's the settings. So if you click on this cog all the way in the bottom, notice it's going to give us settings. Now, settings allow us to customize the workspace. So let's say we want a bigger font size. So I could change this from 12 to, let's say, 22. If I would want a different tab size, Again, we can just change this around. And what I'm trying to tell you is that as the more you're going to be working with your actual text editor, there's going to be times when you're changing your settings to adjust whether that's going to be an extension or just for your personal preferences. Now, also, the settings are, in fact, in a JSON object. So this would be a basically graphical interface, how we can work with the settings. However, if let's say I'm going to change the setting from font size, let's say I'm going to say that this is going to be 22. And once I make the change, the changes are going to be automatically saved. However, there's also an option for the JSON object. And within JSON object, notice something interesting. So now these would be my settings. As you notice, I changed it from whatever it was initially to, let's say, 22. So if I would want to add something else, I'm going to say, I don't know that this the setting for the fonts is going to be something like 30. Now, in this case, I would need to save it. So I have a few options. Either I can go here and just look for the file and check this out that I can obviously save it, or I would have to use the shortcut and that would be command and S. Again, if you're working on Windows, that probably would be control and S, but since this is a Mac, I'm just going to say that this would be command and S. Now, in my case, again, I'm going to delete this because I would like to come back to it within a few videos whenever we we're going to make our first web page already. But just to let you know that this is where the settings would be located for the Visual Studio Code. Okay, enough of me yapping. Let's start working on our first web page.